Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, today, I have the uh, difficult task of announcing the arrest of one of our police detectives. Uh, Jarda Bradford, a detective assigned to District 2. She's 38 years old. She's been a 10-year employee, hired back in November of 2010. Just back in September of this year, two and a half months ago, she was promoted to the rank of detective. Today, we have charged her with two counts of tampering with evidence. She is currently at the Hillsborough County Jail. She'll have a $4,000 bond. Detective Bradford, she was investigating an attempted murder with a firearm that occurred back on October 17th. She created a photo array, a photo pack, uh, a photo lineup, however you want to explain it. We're starting to get into some legal terms. And when you do a photo array of different suspects, they have to be consistent. You can't have visible tattoos, earrings, things of that nature. It appears that during the viewing of this photo array, she failed to cover up some, some markings, some earrings when she displayed this, uh, when this was put together. Uh, when a witness took a look at it, um, they failed to also initial that photo array. So we have two different, that's why we have two different counts. And so when she, so, so I'm sorry, let me step back. So when she creates the photo array and fails to black out the earrings, later it's brought to her attention that she failed to do this and that it could become an issue down the line during the process. She then goes into the system and blackouts the earrings and places it into evidence. So that's how we come up with the tampering with evidence. So we have two different cases, two, two separate incidents. One, the, fed, the blacking out the earrings and then initialing the evidence. And so, you know, what, what I think is very important on this whole thing is this information was brought forth by fellow detectives. You've heard a lot about the duty to intervene about police officers. And that's what is very important here. We had five fellow officers give testimony to these circumstances. They brought forth the wrongdoing. And I think that's very important. This is a procedural issue with evidence. It's not, a, it's not crime scene evidence that was manipulated. It is a procedural issue. You know, it's one of those cases where you hear quite often in politics where the cover-up is worse than the crime. This could have been overcome some point down the road during the criminal investigation, but whenever you have wrongdoing by the detective, by an officer, it just really taints everything. You know, my hope is that this incident does not weaken the trust our community has in the hardworking, honest police officers of this department. I'm extremely disappointed. You know, we believe she had tremendous potential when we promoted her just two and a half months ago. And, you know, this is where we stand today. It will taint the investigation of that attempted murder charge, uh, and that'll be difficult and problematic to move forward during uh, that case. You have any questions? Right now, she is suspended without pay, pending uh, termination. We will uh, go through her her due process, but she will end up being terminated. Yeah, this is the only thing that we're aware of. Uh, you know, I can only speculate why she did it. It was pointed out to her. As a, as a teaching moment that this, the, the fact that she failed to cover up the earrings in the photo pack um, would become an issue potentially in court. Uh, that teaching moment, uh, she clearly didn't understand it and then tried to cover her tracks. Uh, I'm sorry, what's the last part? No, it, it is part of, we have policies that show you how to do, that lay out how you're supposed to do this. You know, there's an actual policy that tells you the layout of this, and fellow detectives will work with a new detective. Uh, it was pointed out to her that there was a problem with it, and then she went and tried to cover that mistake. 
Well, she did know. I mean, she knew that she made a mistake because it was pointed out to her. She then went and tried to cover that up. There, there, um, there was an attempt murder and a possession, uh, a felon in possession of a firearm. So that that person was already in, in custody on other charges. So this is just a, a separate case. So no one was wrongfully put in jail. These are just additional charges of someone that, that is already in, in jail. No, there's no question with that, because there were actually three different photo packs, and it was just this one that she had a problem with. Can you give us the details about that particular suspect and attempted murder charge, the name, etc. on that problem? Yes, we can provide that for you. It, um, it's Yenavir Molina, and uh, he's in, in jail right now on other charges. Uh, the first name is Y-E-N-I-V-E-R, Molina, M-O-L-I-N-A, 96 of 97. Sure, Jarda, J-A-R-D-A, Bradford, B-R-A-D-F-O-R-D. That, that's currently under review. We have no reason to believe that there's any other uh, wrongdoings, but we're certainly going to look into that. You know, I don't know. At the teachable moment was you made a mistake. Uh, I don't know if I really, I, I don't believe I should have to tell police officers you can't tamper with evidence. Um, so I'm not sure what the I don't know what the, I don't know how to answer that. I, I, it's, I shouldn't have to tell cops, you, you have to be honest, so. In a year, as you kind of touched on this sheet, the bigger picture of the lesson learned of uh, policing in a community, when so many folks, in particular in, in different communities, feel like the car, the deck is set against them when working with police, you wanted to come out here, and what message are you sending to the community today about transparency and being able to have that well, I appreciate the question because I think it's very important that, you know, if we as law enforcement want the community that we serve to trust us, they have to know that when we find cops who do wrong, that we're going to hold them accountable. And that's very important. Since I've been chief, I have preached accountability on every level of the organization, starting with me on down. And we just can't have cops doing wrong. And, and it's just frustrating. Uh, I know it, you know, the, it's the cover up is worse than the crime itself. And we cannot have police officers who tamper with evidence, no matter what their motive is. I'd like to hear from Mr. Warren, just from your perspective of your whole job as a, as a state attorney is to put away the bad guy. And uh, even a small, if you can explain to us, without the long minutia, but in a way we can understand how even a small, well, it doesn't even go to the fact that it could trip up prosecutors. It's a question of tampering with evidence. Tampering with evidence corrupts our judicial process. And when an officer betrays the badge and does that, it erodes trust in the very integrity of our system. Uh, you know, I commend Chief Dugan and all of TPD, the officers involved here, because it probably would have been easy for them to sweep this under the rug and to you know, follow some code or whatever it is where you don't call out your fellow officer. But here we had a detective who knowingly doctored two pieces of evidence in the attempt to cover up the mistake that she had made. And the impact was that it corrupted the judicial process going forward. It doesn't matter who it is, whether she's wearing a badge or not, you can't tamper with evidence, you can't obstruct justice, and it's our job to charge people with those crimes to hold them accountable. Had this press conference not happened today, and as you said, maybe TPD didn't bring this to public light, but it came out months later, as you or your office were prosecuting this individual, would this have halted or put a stop in the tracks of that case? It, abs it absolutely could have. Again, it, TPD officers identified it. They called out the conduct. Uh, the 
TPD reached out as soon as they were aware of a potential criminal investigation uh, to let us know. Uh, we conferred on the decision. Uh, obviously, it's TPD's decision to arrest, and we've made the decision to file charges for the obstruction of justice. So that case is being handled by the U.S. Attorney's Office. We've been in contact with the U.S. Attorney's Office. Uh, they're aware of the investigation and the, uh, the tampering, and they'll be able, be able to handle that case going forward uh, without the assistance of the detective, but knowing that they have to overcome now this obstacle in that prosecution.